I'm back, um, kind of. Um, while it's international break and while there was no Sunderland to ruin people's weekends, I thought I would try to do a video that I say will be quick, but it'll probably still be 10-15 minutes long knowing me. Um, but first and foremost, thank you to everyone who's shown support um, on social media and on other YouTube channels when I went with Sean or um, with Ant on um, the Championship Panel Show. Um, but for those of you who've been living, who ha well, for those of you who haven't been seeing me on those other sites or don't follow me on social media, basically my uncle, who was a big Sunderland fan, passed away just over a month ago, um, and I haven't been in the mindset to do videos. And especially with the mood that's been going on at the moment recently, the last thing I needed in my life was more negativity. But you know, people aren't going to be positive about the state of things. Um, but I am going to start getting videos back into the swing of things because I know that's what he would have wanted, and I wanted to, and I wanted to do this video for a while to sort of discuss my thoughts on the model, so to speak. But thanks to everyone who's shown support, it really does mean a lot. And hopefully you guys are alright. Um, so without wasting any more of your time, let's jump right into it. Sunler's model has come under quite a bit of scrutiny recently, and um, and for good reason, because there are faults with it, and even I've said that as someone who still remains a big fan of the model, and spoiler, I still do remain a big fan of the model, but I do admit that there are tweaks then and things that need to change regarding the model um, for us to succeed longer term, and by that I mean next season really. Um... But I kind of wanted to, I wanted to go through, because there's obviously been suggestions about Sunderland not spending much money and not doing whatever else, blah, 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 this left, right and centre. What I decided to do was I wanted to try and go back since, so since some, since the first full season, since Christian Speakman and Stuart, since Christian Speakman and Stuart Harvey were here. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that was the 2021-22 season, which was the year we got promoted from League One. So, and... Back when we talk about this five-year plan that they've got, and we'll, time will tell how much that bears to fruition here, but from that five-year plan, that was from their first full season. So that was year one, last year was year two, this current year is year three of hopefully mid-table nothingness at this point, and then next year is year four, and the year after that, if we haven't got promoted, is year five. So the more happens, the more scrutiny will start to come up. And look, I'm not going I'm, I'm to judge... Um, I'm not going to judge anyone who disagrees with me as long as they're respectful to me, to me backwards. But, like, you know, everyone's got their own opinion. And I do believe that majority of fans or many fans do want just want what's best for the club. But um, I just wanted to sort of try and give across my own thoughts and try and be articulate as, I do, as I'm doing so. But I'm going to go back through the last three seasons now. Because, obviously, the, so 2021, 22, 23, and this year, 23, 24, um, to go back... And try to make a point about how I feel about the model. Now, bear in mind, some of these fees are undisclosed, and the fees that I have seen might not be 100% accurate. So I'm just trying. So I'm just report. These are reported fees. These are what I've been seeing for players, and I just want to. So if anyone's got any corrections in the comments below, then please tell me because I wouldn't be shocked if we didn't pay even even this much. Here we go. Let's get on to it. So 21-22 season. Now, bear in mind the 21-22 and 23-24 season. Sorry, 22-22-23. Start again. 21-22 and 22-23, God say that five times quickly, we didn't make any big sales. We didn't make any big sales. Now, the whole point of my view of the model is once you start making bigger sales, the fees should, or they better, start going up. And I think we'll see a test of that this summer, but I'll get onto that at the end. So starting on 20, so bear in mind the last two seasons, we haven't made any significant player sales. So in the first season, 21-22 in League One, now granted in League One, you're not going to spend too much. But I've seen, and these are not, we're not including loan deals here, by the way. These are just permanent signings, and I'm just going to roll with it from there. So we have Alex Pritchard, which is a free transfer. Corey Evans, free. Danny Bart, free. Jermaine Defoe, free. Trey Hume, 200,000 um, reported fee. Niall Huggins, undisclosed. Dennis Serkin, from a Tottenham fan scene, but that's from the Tottenham end, so they're always going to say a bit more. They've said up to a million pounds, but I'm sure I remember a fee of 600,000. Patrick Roberts, I believe, was a fee that goes up to three million pounds depending on appearances and so on and so forth. So worst case scenario, so you're saying you're having to pay three million, but you're not going to have to pay that in League One. But for but for now, we'll we'll just assume that's free for the minute. Uh, Jay Matete, seven hundred and fifty thousand was what I remember seeing at the time, but I could be wrong on that because I haven't been able to find that fee since. So take that with a pinch of salt. Then we move into the Championship. Now, this is where you start to see a pattern here, right? So we have Leon Diaco, I completely forgot we signed him. I believe that was 700,000, but correct me if I'm wrong. Clark, Jack Clark was 800,000, asked James Copley from the Sun and Echo. The initial fee he believed was 800,000. He put that on Twitter, it's in the domain. Um, Agiolise was undisclosed, but again, for some reason, I remember a £400,000 fee or four five hundred thousand. Again, correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong. We had Pierre Equa, which was initially a free transfer from the West Ham end, I believe. Joe Anderson, undisclosed. Isaac Lahaji, I believe, was free. I'm not sure. I mean, that one, you keep hearing different reports every five minutes. So, um, 
take that with a pinch of salt as well. Then you had Alex Bass undisclosed, but chances are you're not going to have spent that much on a League One goalkeeper. Um, now, Jewison Bennett was around a million pound, and Abdullah Bar was a million euros, which translated, I believe, uh, equated to pounds, it's 850 grand. Then finally, we had Dan Ballard for two million quid. Now, that's permanent transfers up to pre prior to last summer when we didn't make any sort of sales. Then you start to get into this season. Now, bear in mind, this season we have sold Lyndon Gooch, I believe that was for a million quid, um, Isaac Lahadji. Now, I've been, I've heard that we've got four million pounds for him. Now, I don't know how true that is, but for the sake of argument for this video to make me point, I'm going to assume it's four million pounds, but remember that that might be out. So, 1 million for Gooch, report suggested 4 million for Lahadji. Stewart was 6.8 million pound at least. Now, I know people say 8 million quid, but bear in mind, Ross County get a 15% sell on clause as part of the deal. So, that, so 15% of 8 million is 1.2 million. So, it's 8, 606 points, 8 million. So, 1 million, 4 million, that's 5 million. 6.8, that's 11.8 million pounds, right? Now, see if you notice a pattern here. So, we'll start with the cheaper fees. Now, Bishop, Nathan Bishop was undisclosed. Probably wouldn't have been that much. Triantis was 300,000. Bradley Dak was free. Adil Aushish was undisclosed. May, uh, Eliza Mienda, now, so, so those, that's them all, right? Now, you start to get into the fees here. So, um, oh, sorry, I might have mentioned Triantis, but I'll go back and mention it again. Triantis, 300,000. Seal, 1.7 million. That's 2 million straight away. Hamir, 500,000. Job, 1.5 million. That's 4 million straight away. Mundal, 2 million pound. That's 6 million. Yelda, 1.5. That's 7 million. Russian, 2.5. That goes to 10 million. And then you have Eliza Mienda and Timothy Pembele at, at a million euros each, which is roughly 850 grand each, which means it's 1.7 million. So that's 11.7 million pound if what I'm, my maths is right from those transfers. And bearing in mind, we got 11, if I'm right, if what I've said is right, we got 11.8 million in player sales and we spent 11.7 million. Now, people can ask, where's the money gone? Where's the Stuart money gone? Well, there's your answer right there. That's where it's gone. The whole point of the system is to spend what we accumulate. Now, obviously, the catch is you then have to lose players from time to time. You have to lose assets and sales and everything. Now, Bearing in mind that's without Aushish's fee getting mentioned or Bishop's fee getting mentioned. So, and again, we're not counting loan fees for Burstow and, and Styles. So, my point is, my judgment of the model will stem towards the summer when... Because like, let's let's beat around the bush. Let's not beat around the bush. Jack Clark's gone in the summer. I'll be absolutely... The only way I could see him being here remotely is if he's injured throughout the summer window. But even then, Stuart was injured throughout the whole of last summer's window and he was still able to sign for Southampton. I would be absolutely amazed if Jack Clark's here next season. The attention then should be turning to... Because we're not going up. That, 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 that's been gone for about a month, really, since the Swansea game, coincidentally, my last video. Um... That's not happening, and it's unlikely at this point that we're going to get relegated, but being a Sunderland fan, you can't rule anything out, but I doubt it's going to happen. So we're pretty much going to be, it looks very likely we're going to be in the Championship next season. Now, once Clark goes, now the fee for me we should be getting is a fee of roughly, say, 25 million quid. That, for me, is a fair valuation, given when you look at the other players that have left this division via player sales. Alex Scott being a key one last summer when he left for 25 million quid. And I even speak to a Bristol City fan who agrees with me that Sunderland should then be getting a minimum of 25 million quid. You can say, well, he didn't do well against Newcastle, but he did well against Fulham twice last season, and Fulham aren't any mugs. They finished in the top half in the Prem last year, regardless if they put out their first team or not, because they had enough players against us that are should be playing in the Premier League. So my argument is, once Jack Clark goes, Spurs, so say it's £25 million, it was €30 million, Euros, trusted journalist Fabrizio Romano did say. He said uh, €30 million, Euros, and with that, that's translated to just over £25 million quid in pounds. So, and Spurs get 25% of the sale. So let's say it's just over £25 million, quid. Spurs should get £6.25 million of that. So we'll say roughly £19 million pounds that you should be bringing in from the sale of Jack Clark. I know it'll be amortised in instalments probably, but you're still going to get that money in. Or even if worst case scenario we sold him for £20 million, we get 15 of that after Tottenham's clause is accounted for. Then I think it's fair to start judging what we're spending in terms of transfer fees. And make no mistake about it, even as someone who's a big Speakman fan, and I still stand by that I think he's done a much better job than what some fans think he has, or make out that he has, um, I think that once you get to this summer, 
if you get big fees and if the spending doesn't up significantly, and we need to add this queer clearly as well, players who can be maybe a younger but are more established and ready to contribute in the here and now, then I think every bit of criticism Speakman gets is absolutely fair and warranted. I've said this across Twitter, YouTube with Sean, I've said it multiple times. So that's there, it's right there. Clip it all you want to. If we do not spend adequately this summer once we get bigger fees, then every bit of criticism Speakman gets is fair. Up to this point, prior to the sales though, there is a pattern though. Apart from reportedly Sirkin, uh, possibly Roberts um, going, going um, upwards to a certain fee, Ballard and Bennett though, we have never gone, reportedly never gone, over £1 million on a transfer fee when we haven't had player sales. This season alone, we've gone, reportedly anyway, we've gone over a £1 million one, two, three, four, five times in terms of net spend. Sorry, in terms of spend on individual fees for players. Now, this backs up my point that I do believe we will up the spending once we start getting bigger fees. But that's just my belief. I can't prove that. I don't know for definite. Likewise, the other way, though, people definitely don't know that we're not going to do that. We, the likelihood is we're not going to find... The reality is we're not, both sides aren't going to find out till the summer. Now, if we don't start doing that, then every bit of criticism, I'll be right there with them because that isn't good enough. I think the model is a good aspect, because I still think the model is pretty good, it just needs tweaking. I think this season now, more than anything, should be proof that the model needs tweaking, and it does. So, next summer, this summer, for Christian Speakman, KLD, whoever else, Stuart Harvey, Wansatori, it's a massive one for them. Because on the back of this season, with what's happening at the minute, like... You can't afford another slip-up. And Speakman, for example, deserves massive criticism for the books of the Beal appointment. Because I know you can't um, take into account what fans want when you're making a managerial decision. But most nearly, there was a universal reaction against Michael Beal coming in and he still made the appointment. This summer is a massive one for them and they can't afford to mess it up. Next season, I think, depending on who goes up and comes down, is a massive chance for Sunderland to try and at least finish in the top six if they spend the money well enough from what happens with Clark. Whether we do it or not is a different matter. But the fact of the matter is, that's the expectation whether people like it or not. Anyway, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you there. Um, I've tried to condense it down into my thoughts on the model, that I do still like it, and I do still, despite this season, that has still, in my opinion, been more hits than misses in terms of players. And a lot of the players this season are signed as long-term prospects. So for me, I don't think it's fair to reach a definitive opinion either way on them. But what I would say is I will agree with people that this season is, this summer's massive, because they need to sign players who may be younger, 23, 24, maybe even 21, 22, but who are established, who have had at least a season in the championship, have done it, such as likes of a Tom Cannon or a Jay Stansfield. Whether they come off or not, I don't know. But that's the type of quality of player, in particular strikers, that we need to be targeting and should be targeting. But yeah, um, I still like the model. I expect opinion to be respected one way or another. Likewise, I'll try and respect others. But um, let me know in the comments below respectfully what you think. Um, I know there are some people who want this thing scrapped. I personally disagree at the minute. I still think there is enough there to see that something will come good out of it but and another thing we need to make do is make sure make sure we get a good head coach as well by the way we can't afford to mess that up again um but yeah sorry guys i've waffled on videos will be coming back um whether i'll be doing match videos after games i don't know um but i wanted to at least put something out because i've kind of made you wait long enough it's been a month already but um you take care anyway guys you all take care you lovely lot and thanks again for the support as always it really really is appreciated in what has been a very very shit time for me and my family at the minute um but yeah thanks very much all for watching and i'll maybe see you for a video after the cardiff game unless something else happens take care guys stay safe and love you a lot as always